Yeah, this is a good church. We're having church up in here. Amen? I said amen? amen. Okay. You guys, okay, here we go. Okay, anybody that's here, raise your hands. Okay. Just checking to make sure you guys are all here, because sometimes, okay, anybody that's not here, raise your hand. <laughs> you know, our God is so wonderful. I mean, I tell you, the Lord and I, we just have a good time. You know why? Because he's just a good God. He's a great God. Hallelujah. So no matter what you're going through today, no matter what it is that is on your heart today, I want you to really pull today. Um, in Romans 10, 17, I just want to give you a couple of scriptures and then we'll get started. But in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So faith comes by hearing. Why? Why? If you're hearing God's word, you're learning to trust the Father that what he says is true. But if you never really know what the word says, how are you going to trust that? So see, you can't go on someone else's revelation right? You have to make sure that you're knowing it for yourself. And then another scripture I have here is John 10, 27. It says, and this is Jesus talking. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So if you want to follow the Lord, see that scripture says you do hear the Lord Jesus Christ. See, so many of us think, well, I just don't hear God. You know, I hear a lot of you guys say, well, pastor, you talk about all the time that you hear God. Yes, I do. I hear him all the time. And, and if I think, okay, I'm not hearing in my heart, I just bring this. Because it's here. This is the word, this is Jesus spoken from the very beginning of Genesis all the way through Revelation. So no matter where you are, new or old, Jesus was conveyed. Amen? And then the next scripture I have here is, whoever is of God hears God's word, and that's in John 8, 47. In other words, the, the scripture here says, whoever is of God hears the, word of, the words of God. See, so many of us think that we don't hear God, but you do through his word. That's the first and foremost powerful way to learn the voice of God, because you have to put this in before you can start to hear and coordinate what you're hearing from your spirit to this. Then this way we know we're hearing from God. So a lot of people say, well, how do you know you're hearing from God? Well, today you are blessed because my husband is going to be bringing the word of God and he's going to be talking to you about hearing the voice of God. So please welcome Mr. Steve Lawrence. Woo! I'm, I'm going. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me get my whiteboard. Are you going to get it? Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, usually what you hear from me is about the offering and your tithes and offerings and giving. So I'm going to give back a little bit today. So um, first of all, I want to pray. Father, we just glorify you. We lift you up. We lift up the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the voice that you hear and hearken to. The Holy Spirit is the one you should be giving your obedience and honor to. Father, we thank you that each person in here hears today and they hear the word of God. And Father, I thank that you give me the words to speak, the wisdom and knowledge of God through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> this is uh, about how I learned to hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, I just, it took me a long time to figure out which voice I'm listening to and who I'm obedient to. And, um, and I kind of want to share a little funny with you to start with. Uh, actually, Pastor Pat thought this was funny. It didn't seem so funny at the time. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was kind of awesome, but after I said it, she said, why did you say that? And I said, well, it was, I thought I was just telling somebody the truth. So here I am uh, ushering, and 
I'm the center aisle usher of a very large church with probably 30, 40, 50 seats on the front row, and it's my job to fill those seats. So um, they called me on the radio and said, look, we've got some associate pastors that came to the first or second service, and this was third service, and they had four empty seats, and I'd, I filled two of them. Then I needed two more people. So I go out to the church, and I go try to find people that normally don't sit on the front row, because I think everybody should sit on the front row. That's just how I perceive church. Uh, so I go get two people, and they were several years older than me, let's put it that way. And I said, would y'all like to sit on the front row? And, and the, the guy goes, and the woman's going, hmm. <laughs> and I'm going, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal, you know. I paid $100 for those seats. They're really worth it. <laughs> you know, so finally I convinced them, and they came up, and I set them right in front of the pastor. And they're sitting there, and I said, is everything okay? And the lady looks at me, and she says, well, um, why are we doing this? And I said, well, this is really, isn't this a really good thing? She says, well, he's probably going to fall asleep. <laughs> and I'm looking at her and I said well that's okay the word of God is peaceable it may be the only peace he gets all day <laughs> you, do you get it? I, I didn't get it I walked, I walked away and the guy's going <laughs> and the woman's like this, I'm going, and I told her about it. She's busting out laughing. She said, you don't get it, do you? I said, no. <laughs> so I told her myself, okay? So another thing, too, is I've learned is that when the Lord speaks to you, the Holy Spirit speaks to you, write it down. There's a time in your life that He speaks to you for particular reasons. Mine's usually He wakes me up at night. Midnight, 2, 3 in the morning, it'll make a difference to Him. And I get up and I go and sit at the table until I stop talking and, he, and I start listening. Then he starts talking. But you have to stop talking for you to start listening. Okay, so, and I want to give you a little bit of history about us. Um, Living Grace Church, Pastor Pat went to Karis Bible College for three years, got a ministry degree through Karis Bible College. Uh, we... Uh, that was in May of 2019. She graduated. And before we left there, we had a meeting, especially about 20 minutes long, with Andrew Womack. And um, we spent an hour and a half with Andrew. Andrew prophesied over us. He prophesied over this church. He prophesied over her as a minister and sent her out as a pastor to pastor this church. Okay, so he said, in order to get ordained through Karis Bible College, you have to minister in this ministry for at least two years before he would ordain you. In May of, I'm, I'm sorry, October of 2021, we flew back out to the minister's conference where pa Andrew Womack ordained Pastor Pat as a minister of this church. And we are partners of his church, and he's, he's been a part of this church ever since we started it. And we support that ministry, and they support us with ministry stuff, and they support us with people coming here to minister at this church. Pastor Greg's been here two or three times. Uh, Brian and Sue Nutman are coming in a couple weeks. They're uh, instructors at the college. Uh, Marcus Wick came in here came here as a prophet in the November of nineteen. So. Uh, I just wanted you to all to know that. Now I want you to know my disclaimer. My disclaimer, if I say anything y'all don't like today, call her. <laughs> I'm at, I, I, just really, if you've got any emails, if it's good stuff, you can tell me, but if there's anything else, contact Pastor Pat. And um, just so you know, when I get to this, I'm going to get to my testimony about healing of hearing. And that, I have approved this message because I'm the one that lived it. Okay, so, so you're going to see um, right here, this obedience, look at this for yourself, and if you need to write stuff down, write it down. I had to look at what am I obedience to, 
What am I showing honor to? And what is the result of it? Now, if the Holy Spirit, if you're obeying the Holy Spirit, your obedience is going to be to the Spirit of God and His voice. Not my voice. Not anybody else's voice, but the Spirit of God. And that's who you'll show honor to, and that'll be the result, will be in the Word of God. It's really that simple. Okay, and my best example that I learned outside of Jesus Christ himself was the centurion. The centurion soldier. You can read about him in Matthew if you want, Matthew 8, 8. The, the, the centurion answered the Lord and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant would be healed. Do you understand this guy explained to Jesus, actually the people that were there, about the power of life and death, that he had the power of life and death over anybody that served under him, including his servant that he owned was under him, under his authority. And he said to Jesus, who had the power of life and death, I, through humility, succumb to what you say. The centurion who was under Rome, under Caesar, this right here, speaking to Jesus, could have caused him, cost him his life. And because he owned this servant, the centurion gave Jesus the power to heal his servant because it was underneath his authority. Okay, so then I want to get down to where we've all been taught by Andrew and by Pastor Pat about your spirit and your soul and your body. That's just who we are. We have a spirit. And what spirit are you listening to when you're hearing a voice? It's your choice of what you're listening to and what you're putting in. And you have to decide in your body how it's going to reflect to you. Okay, so does what you're hearing line up with the Bible, with the Word of God? It's really, does what the Spirit of God say or the voice that you're hearing actually line up with what, you're, what you've heard, what you believe, and what you're saying? And that is you, your common denominator. You are your common denominator. I'm my common denominator. I cannot hear for you. I cannot be you. I cannot, my spirit is not your spirit. I have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, and then I find out what will it cost me to follow the Spirit of God or not follow the Spirit of God. It's really that simple, everybody. In John 16, 13, the word says, However, when he, the Spirit, when, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. That's, this is what we're looking for, the things to come in us. Not where we've been, but where we're going. This starts today. Faith starts right now. Faith is not yesterday or the day before. Faith is today. John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is saying that the communication that we have with God is from His Spirit to our spirit. That's how we hear His voice. The Holy Spirit conveys the will of God to our spirits. And I will tell you, you harden your heart towards the Lord. I did. And He had to verbally speak to me. Now, He can verbally speak speak to you but the majority of the time it is spirit to spirit if we're compassionate and loving enough thought I was done didn't you <laughs>
And I told you, this, this was tough for me. I was raised Baptist. I was raised Baptist. And I'll get to that in a few minutes. I was only raised with the Father, Son, and the Bible. That's all that I knew. I didn't know there was a Holy Spirit. At eight years old, I got saved. Okay, right here, your obedience to, what are you being obedient to? Is the honor that you show it, and that's what will come out of your soul and your thinking. Okay, if you honor Jesus, Matthew 16, 16, what is it? Who did Peter say Jesus was? Christ, the Son of the living God. This right here, this John 3, 16, that was, that was forced. I actually believed it because that's what I was told. You only got saved. That's as far as your salvation went was through you got saved, that's it. And you could lose it real quick if you were somewhere you weren't supposed to be. <laughs> and that's when I was well, eight years old, I learned and, and accepted the Lord, but I only knew I had salvation and I only knew about the Father, the Son, and the Bible. It was until I was 28 years old that we went back to a church that was like this and they started teaching me about the Holy Spirit. I had not clue who He was. I, had to, I, I didn't know that He was leading me all my life through different occurrences, and that's what I'll tell you when I get to my testimony. And our sins, okay, I thought everybody always talked about their sins. All the time they just talked about what they did and how many sins they did and how bad they were and all this. I didn't have a clue what else to do. Okay, but yet the Bible says, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That will all, that's the only sin I'll tell you I committed. I'm not going to testify about the devil. Because in Hebrews 8, 12, for I will be merciful to their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. If he don't remember them, why should I? Why? I just couldn't figure it out. It took me years to figure out why people told me how bad they were. <laughs> Seriously. So, and then I learned about the Holy Spirit in all this. Does the Holy Spirit ever tell you anything bad about yourself? No. He only tells you good about the Word of God. And that's, of course, John 14, 16 through 7, and I will pray that He's the helper He's the one that brings you all truth, all knowledge and wisdom of the Word of God. And this again falls under whose choice? Who is your common denominator? And does it promote Jesus, what you're hearing and saying about yourself, about your church, about the leadership, about everything that's around you? What are you saying about it? Because you are your own testimony. Okay, now I'm going to get to the testimonies. What are you saying in your testimony? That's me. Who are you honoring with what you're saying? And who are you edifying? Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story about myself and my wife. This, you, you may, but this is how we lived our lives. This is how things worked out because of the Spirit of God directing us to be here today. Okay, when I was fixing to graduate from high school, I was, like I said, raised Baptist. My parents left church. I was about 10 when they left church. They didn't go back to church the entire time I lived at home. I just uh, went to church a little bit with a friend of mine. With a, at a youth group at a Baptist church. Uh, back to Baptist again. Uh, basically just learning how not to be bad. Okay, so it was a right, before, right before I was about to graduate from high school, um, my brother had been in college already a year. And my mother and father had established a curriculum for me to follow for, to now to eternity. You know how that works for somebody that's 18 or 19 years old? Not so good. Okay. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not, you, everybody, everybody that was in my class 
had signed up to go to college, and my parents signed me up to go to college, and I'm going, mm -mm. I, it, it just wasn't what I thought I was supposed to be doing. So I'm driving home from co um, high school right before I graduated. And I just, I was just free from everything. Didn't really have a care about much of anything. I had my own job, my own car, my own money, supporting myself. And I, I, I was driving by the Navy recruiter's office. And this voice spoke to me and said, go in there. I don't know, that's cool, I'm, I'm in. Man, I pulled in there, parked in the Navy recruiter's office, went inside and signed up. This, this is my testimony, y'all. I, I went in, I signed up, and joined the Navy. And uh, there's a little bit of differences there when you join the Navy. And, and they uh, ex actually, there I joined the Navy Reserves, which was fine with me. It was a six-year enlistment, which um, was fine with me also because I wasn't doing anything else. And I definitely did not want to go to college because my brother had been in college a year. He had hair down to his waist and didn't do anything but go to school. And... Uh, <laughs> Invited me to come over to visit them. I went over and visited. I said, this ain't my life. I mean, I don't want no part of this. And now you can understand why a lot of people go to college and graduate and then don't know what to do with it anyway. So, so I joined the Navy and I had to go home and tell my parents. So I went home and I sat there with my, and I told my mother and father, I said, look, I need to talk to you. We sit at the dining room table. Now I know that's the war room. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it became the war room. So we're sitting there, and my mother had, and please, please bear with me here. I love my mother, and I love my father. They're both passed away. Um, but my mother, had, my mother had these aspirations of because she didn't go to college, she thought we wouldn't make nothing of ourselves unless we went to college. It wasn't in the cards for me, y'all. I just, I, it wasn't in my thinking. So I sat there and uh, my dad, my dad just, and I want you to bear with this. I, my dad was gr taken out of school when he was in the sixth grade, put to work on a sharecropper's farm in Alabama. But he grew in knowledge and wisdom and became a master mechanic of aircrafts automobiles, tractors, and diesels. He retired from the Kubota Diesel Tractor Company as a master mechanic, as a shop foreman. You could call him, tell him what the engine sound like, sound like, and he could tell you on the phone how to fix it. That's how good of a mechanic he was, and believe me, they are out there. So we sat there at the table, and I said, look, I got something I need to tell y'all. And I said, um, I joined the Navy today. That didn't go well. <laughs> my, my dad's sitting to the left of me, my mother's sitting across the table, and my mother got extremely angry and upset. She said some things that she regretted later on because she literally said to me that you just ruined your entire life and got upset, left the room, and I turned and looked at my dad, and my dad just says, he, this is what he said to me, son, is that what you want to do? I said, yes, sir, it is. He said, then you have my blessing. First time he'd ever spoke up in our family at all, and I went, yes, <laughs> this is awesome, because you know what? I've been blessed with not really being, feeling guilty. I mean, I never looked at failure as failure because I learned that you keep trying to you succeed, that makes you a success and you're never a failure. So I never had to worry about feeling guilty. I never really thought or felt guilty when my mother said that because she's speaking from a 
person to a person that's looking at the brother that's before you that's not doing anything very well. So um, I had my father's blessing. So that was about that was the beginning of June. I just graduated. And then about a month later, my dad comes to me, which was extremely odd. And he says to me, you and I, we're going on a trip. And I'm like, uh, this is not good. <laughs> this, this is my guy, my dad, my support. Okay. This all took place, y'all, in my life. He says, you and I, we're going on vacation to Alabama. My dad never went to Alabama. He never took vacation. And he definitely didn't go with me. <laughs> so we got in the car and we left and drove 10 hours to get to Alabama. We got to Alabama. It was right before the 4th of July. And um, we went to visit my great uncle, which... You understand, they're, they came from very poor backgrounds, very poor farming backgrounds. So we went to visit my great uncle, which I'd only visited one time in my entire life. We go over there and we go walking in the house. I go walking in the house and guess who's standing in the middle of this double wide mobile home where they lived? <laughs> Pastor Pat. This Beautiful young lady was standing right in front of me. And I'm going, holy smokes. <laughs> I said, man, this, I, I mean, we, we shared, we talked. I said, hey, look, let's go outside. We walked outside. And I said, hey, the rodeo's tonight. You want to go to the rodeo with me? She said, let me find out. If now, you got to understand, I think she lives there. This is God, y'all. This is ordaining and meeting of two people that got married 51 years ago. Okay. So um, she goes and asks, and she comes back, and she says, Nope, can't go. Going back to Birmingham tonight. And just my air went out of my tire, man. And I'm going, Okay, okay. And we talked some more, and she got in the car with my aunt. And I'm going, what is she doing with my aunt? My aunt was there visiting. There's another story why she was there. I don't know what, what's the deal with her going with my aunt. Well, I never knew. So um, we, we went, I went back, my dad and I, we drove back to Winter Haven, 10 hours back home, okay? So then... My aunt comes up to where I live. I work. I worked at Publix grocery store as a stockman. She comes up there. She says, Are you, you know, and she brings her with her. I, I didn't see her at the time, but she brings her with her. And I'm like, I, they call me to the front office. Um, and I go walking up there. My aunt called. It's Virginia Lawrence. We, we just love her. She, she actually correlated through the Spirit of God for us to get us together. So we, um, I went up to the front of the office and here my aunt standing there and I'm like, what, what, you know, hey, how are you doing? What are you doing? She said, well, you know, I just thought there was somebody here you need to meet. And I'm going, uh, you know. And then out from, by, from behind my aunt, she steps out. And I'm going, you remember Pat in Alabama? I said, oh yeah, I remember Pat. <laughs> what is she doing here? She said, well, she went with me and the kids to Alabama because she babysits for me. She lives across the street from me. She babysits for me. And I think y'all need to get together and date. <laughs> and I'm going, seriously, when can I come over? <laughs> she said, well, you'll have to meet her parents first. I said, that's okay. I'm good with that. So... She said, well, how about 6 o'clock tonight? And I'm like, okay. This is, this is simple. This is how simple God is, y'all. So I get off work and I go home change, and I go over to my aunt's house. 
And she says, now, you need to go, and Pat was there, y'all need to go there and meet her parents. So I said, okay, I'm good with that. I go across the street with her, and we walk in there and meet her parents. Now, I don't know, her parents, her parents think, my grandparents that live next door, my aunt lives next to her, them, they think they got a lot of money. Because they're, I thought we were poor, but her family was way poorer than us. I mean, they were seriously poor, and we thought we were poor. <laughs> and uh, her, parents, her parents now think, because I belong to my grandparents, that I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, okay, you can date her. Okay, so this is just the beginning, y'all. This is really kind of cool. So I said, okay, so we sat out on the uh, front porch, and we talked, and we went to the they actually let us go to the store. We went to the store and back and got a Coke. And she liked a Coke and a brownie, you know. And so that's what we got. And we came back and I said, like, I, you know, I know that we just met again. I said, but, you know, in the morning, this is Saturday night that we met. This was July the, like, 16th. I wrote it down. Uh, July the 18th. So, Saturday night. July the 19th, I leave to go to boot camp. We sat there and talked for a few hours. I said, well, you know, this is all really kind of neat. I said, but in the morning, I'm flying out to Chicago, Great Lakes, to boot camp. I'm going to be gone till October. She said, that's okay. She said, will you write me? And I said, well, I, I guess. So I wrote her a letter, and she wrote me back. Okay, so... We, I came back from boot camp, and of all things, they delayed my deployment for a year. Okay? I'm delayed to go on active duty after boot camp, y'all, for a year. So I stayed in Winter Haven, and we dated a year. And then at the, the, next, the next July, I said, look, I got, I'm going to be deployed. I'm going to Maryland to school. Do you want to go? She said, yes, I do. I said, do you want to marry me and go? And she said, yes, I do. <laughs> that was July 31st. This July 31st will be 51 years ago that we've been married. And if you look up Genesis 24, Rebekah was brought to Isaac. See, God can orchestrate and demonstrate his power of obedience in who you honor and what you get. We've been following this our entire lives together. It is so cool and so awesome that we're as Andrew said, he has all the life experiences that you've had has prepared you to go and be where you're going. I mean, that's just incredibly awesome, y'all. And I can only tell you this. This is the truth. This is my testimony. And I want you to know that I glorify God every day for it. Every day when we get up, I say, we're going to the church. Why? Because I don't have to. I want to. So, in recoup of this is, it's your obedience. According to your common denominator, what title and honor you give to it. And this is where your soul will prosper in it. So, did you get anything out of that? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. And I didn't even get, and I will share later about what I said about the Lord speaking to you verbally. There was a time in my life I said, I don't care. I don't want to listen. And he verbally instructed me to do something. And I got up and did it and continued what we're doing. So if you would please welcome Pastor Pat. <laughs>
What do you need? The Bible. Have to read. I'm trying to get it together here, <laughs> trying to hold it together. Um, my whole life, God has just been amazing, and you know, He's that way to all of us. Um, so, if you um, prayer partners, will go ahead and come on down. Um, as Steve was sharing, you know, there's just so many things, and each one of you could come up and share what God has done. But Steve and I have just talked about so many things that. Um, when you go back and listen to your life, when you go back and look at your life, when you go back and study your life, you can see how you really heard God and you didn't really know it at the moment. But that, and that's what Steve and I were, we've just been recouping this, this teaching within the last couple weeks. And it's just been amazing. And I just encourage you to do that. Just look back because you all have testimonies of God's faithfulness in your life, of when he's spoken to you. And, you know, we're in the midst of um, healing is here. And as Steve was talking in Mark 10, verse 51, Jesus answered and said to him, he says, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for you? See, it, the Lord has already met all of our needs. Amen. And so the Lord, when he was, and so he said, Lord, I just want my sight. So, you know, if you guys would just go ahead and stand to your feet. I just want to encourage you that today, if, if there's anything here today that, that you feel like you need the Lord, it's just like, Lord, you know, I don't feel I have a clear understanding of hearing your voice. I don't have a clear, um, maybe to be able to hear your voice or to understand, like Steve was sharing, you know, how is it that I know that it's God's word? And it's been, it's been saying about because he's good. Amen. Because his word is always good and he's always faithful. So I just want to encourage you if you're here today. Father, I just thank you for each person that's here today. Lord, I just thank you that whatever situation that they're in, Lord, that I just want them to know that they can trust you because you know where they are. You know what they need. You know exactly what to do to help them. Because, Father, you've already been faithful. You've already made the provision. You've already given the healing. Father, so we just thank you today that we know that when we come up here and pray with each other, we are coming into the prayer of agreement with your will and with your word. And so, Father, I just thank you now, and I praise you for all the things that you've done for us. So I just want to encourage you today that if you're here today and there's something, maybe it's for your marriage, maybe it's for your health, maybe it's for, you know, your family, whatever it is, the Lord says to ask. There's a reason the Lord wants us to ask. There's a reason the Lord wants us to speak it out and to come into agreement with each other to know that his faithfulness is so good, to know that God has already made that provision for you. Glory be to God. So, Father, we just thank you now. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, we thank you that we hear your voice because your sheep hear your voice. And, Lord, we follow you and your word. And you are so good to us. You are so faithful. There's just somebody here today that just, the Lord says, every time she says that, I, it's, it's hard for me to believe that. Well, the Lord wants you to know that's the lie from the pit of hell. Because the Lord God Almighty loves you. He has given so, so much for you. So much for you. And, you know, there's, there, there, I just, there's, some, there's someone here today that, you know, you've been carrying a load. You've been carrying a load. You've been carrying a load. And the Lord's saying that load is not for you to carry. That load is not for you to carry. That is not for you to carry. You are to cast it at my feet. I am the one that carried that for you. No matter what the situation is, God has carried it for you. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We just give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Or someone here has been having throat issues, something to do with your throat, and I think maybe it makes your throat sore and swallowing, and I think something as you're swallowing down. So if that's you, we just want you to come up so we can pray with you. We want to agree with you because God's going to heal that. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody here? Come on up, guys. If you need anything, just go ahead and start praying for them, guys. We just thank you, Father. We give you glory. Lord, you want us healed more than we want it. And I just thank you, Father, that their faith that you have given to them, they just use their faith, your faith that you've already given to them to be able to receive the healing that you've already provided. So, Father, we just thank you for that. Oh, hallelujah. What is it you want from God today, church? What is it you're wanting from God? I want to hear him. I want to know him. He wants the same thing for you. He wants the same thing for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Come on, church, pray. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your healing power. We thank you, Lord, that you want these healed. We thank you for the healing power of God right now. We thank you, Lord, that no sickness, no disease, no infirmity can stay in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that they have been washed with the blood of Jesus. Every sin has been forgiven. Every word has been cast at your feet. So, Lord, I thank you that they can receive your health and your healing, life and to that situation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. On the right shoulder, the right arm, the right shoulder, the Lord's saying there's something going on with someone here. The right shoulder, the right shoulder. Now look, if it's the left, guys, I'm human here. So I'm listening to the Spirit of God. If it's your left, then don't, don't come because it's not your right. Amen? Come because God's here now to heal you. Amen? So come on, come on. Glory to God. There's a, there's a tightness in the chest. There's someone here that's got a tightness in the chest. Tightness in the chest right here. You were healed with your throat? Well, tell us about it. Amen. Okay. Is it gone? Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Make sure you give God the glory. He gets all the glory. Amen. Amen.